when hospice first started, what did you think to yourself during the process? Did you ever think that it wouldn't work out? No, I never did because I, I believed in it and I, I knew that it had to work. And from the original patients that we had and going with Dr. Shope and seeing how he handled end of life, that I knew it had to work and it has. Personally, I had been working as a volunteer with my church, the First Lutheran Church, and started um, at the request of a pastor going into the homes and being with people when they were sick. I, I don't know why. <laughs> it was just something that I enjoyed doing. From then on, uh, next, my daughter, Leslie, worked in Dr. Shope's histology lab at Wimber Hospital and she knew that he was always going into the homes and visiting people and actually going at the time of death. And she said, oh, my mom started doing that for the church. And he said, send your mom out, I wanna meet her. So I went out, met with Dr. Shope, and that just started it. In 1977, uh, I think it was clear the end of the year, December, uh, we were incorporated as a hospice program. So that was, we started in 1977 because Dr. Shope would go back there and see people who were dying uh, alone and actually in pain. And he decided he wanted to do something about it. So he ran into uh, one of the Wallies and they talked about it one night. And here they helped us with the money to put the first palliative care unit in around here anywhere. And we had our unit put in in May of 1981. And from then we went upstairs where we are now and we um, dedicated that unit in the year 2000. We're one of the few nonprofit hospices left. So we take patients regardless of their insurance diagnosis and ability to pay for anything. We do not bill patients or families for anything related to hospice care. We have a foundation that supports us in that through fundraising and donations that we are able to continue to provide that service. So there's not really any other area of health care that you would you know, receive the same service without getting a bill for that. We are actually the first hospice in the whole country to utilize flower essences, so that's kind of cool. And so when I did my training with the Flower Essence Society in California, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I was one of the first healthcare people at all, like including nurses, nurse aides, to ever take the training. So the Flower Essence Society really kind of jumped on that too because I was thrilled at the possibility of having this to offer to hospice patients and they were as well because they were very aware of how much this can help people at the end of their lives so and what flower essences are very different from aromatherapy and very different from herbal medicine because they're the energetic um, signature of certain plants flowers trees um, it's basically the energetic signature of nature which we resonate very deeply with and so I like to explain to my patients that it's sort of bringing nature to them because they can't be out in nature I started out after I took my training I became a palliative care unit volunteer for a while and uh, my sister Frankie said that we needed more home care volunteers as we were getting more patients in our program. She trained me to become a home care volunteer and she shadowed me with my first patient and sat in the background while I respite sat and took care of the patient and at the end of my day with that patient she said okay you're ready to do it on your own and I, I just love doing home care. I love the challenge of it because every patient and every family is unique. And uh, I just, I love what I'm doing. Everybody, all of us have, has a story. And I think it's kind of neat that our volunteers can be someone that listens to the patient one more time. You know, their family already knows their story, but a volunteer can hear it one more time. My grandfather was in this program at Winber Hospice 
probably seven years ago. So I wasn't even, I wasn't even in grad school yet. Um, but I remember thinking, who are these angels? The nurses, the volunteers, um, you know, it was a longer process. So there were volunteers that came to sit with him and read the Bible. And whenever we couldn't be there, it was such an amazing program. Like I said, I just remember thinking, who are these angels? And in grad school, the first day, I remember a professor saying, what do you want to do when you graduate? And it stuck with me. I said, I want to be a hospice social worker. So I want to, I want to be one of those people that help in the most trying time of anyone's life. Dr. Shep and Frankie Bach, the co-founders, felt that there should be um, a symbol uh, and a way to show uh, love for our patients. So they decided on a red rose, which symbolizes eternal life. Uh, so they chose uh, the single red rose, and the card with it says from John 14, 18, I will not leave you comfortless. And that's the scripture that goes with that. And the whole idea of it is, we'd like to do this as a last act of love for our patient. I get several, several thank yous a month in the mail from families that tell me how much that has meant to them. It may seem very simple that it's just a single rose, but it's the fact that we personally showed up, um, expressed our um, you know, sympathy to their loved one passing, and just made that a personal experience for them. That it's always, it, it's just so comforting at that time for them to see us, and to see that um, even though their loved one has passed, our care in helping them has not. So in this community, hospice has always been Wimber Hospice. People, you know, never even thought of anything else. Uh, lately, obviously, there's been a lot of for-profit hospice programs, and that's great. And certainly, the need is there. They, you know, this whole baby boom generation. There's a exponential growth, and the need for hospice care is just is just crucial. And uh, so, it's never a matter of me selecting this hospice or that hospice. It's always been there only ever was Wimber Hospice, and that's all that ever will be. I really wish people weren't afraid of hospice. They still are. It's, it still feels like giving up and it couldn't be further from the truth. It's truly about giving people their power back.